This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2208, Trading Games, by Nick Majuli of ofdollarsanddata.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Now let's get right to it and continue optimizing your life. Trading Games by Nick Majuli of ofdollarsanddata.com. This week, the SEC filed suit against eight financial influencers from Atlas Trading, an online stock picking community, for manipulating their social media followers into buying and selling stocks for their own personal gain. The suit explains how their scheme worked. Quote, they identify stocks ripe for manipulation, acquire substantial positions in these securities, and then recommend those stocks as good investments to their followers on Twitter, in online stock trading forums they run, and on podcasts. They encourage their followers to purchase the selected stocks, often claiming that they likewise have bought or intend to buy these stocks for themselves and hold them. Instead, the defendants sell their shares into the demand that their deceptive promotions generate, end quote. Since January 2020, the influencers earned approximately $100 million from their illicit trading activities, making it one of the largest pump and dump schemes in American history. Alex Good wrote an incredible thread providing details on exactly what these influencers did and why you should avoid these kinds of behaviors. He concluded, quote, A, don't use followers as exit liquidity. B, Don't collude or provide early signals to friends. C, don't discuss the materiality of your statements to price action privately or publicly. D, don't flex or entice others to do your trades. E, don't lie, end quote. If I could, I'd add, don't get cocky to the list as well. Because in light of the lawsuit, every brash thing these guys ever said is coming back to haunt them. In particular, Zach Morris, the ringleader at Atlas Trading, had quite a few tweets that made him look very bad in retrospect. He frequently joked about getting caught by the SEC. And he even tweeted, quote, the movie will be sweet, end quote, in reference to the lawsuit filed against him. Morris has since deleted the tweet. I'm guessing he didn't like the ending to the movie. Jokes aside, this behavior doesn't really surprise me. Because the kind of people that make tens of millions of dollars by lying to their followers are the same kind of people that think they can't outwit the SEC. It's almost true by definition. Think about it. If you're making millions of dollars in such a short period through trading, you're either one, insanely lucky, or two, willing to take extreme actions, such as breaking the law, borrowing heavily, etc., to get there. I could apply the same logic to Jason DeBolt everyone's favorite all-in Tesla investor. 100% of his portfolio is in Tesla stock. Of course, what Jason is doing isn't illegal, but it's similarly extreme. Last week, DeBolt tweeted that he was down $11 million on his Tesla position, and he was considering selling his house to buy more Tesla shares. Well, guess what? This week, he announced that he's following through. DeBolt will soon be without a home, but we'll have many more Tesla shares as a result. If you recall, I wrote about DeBolt back in January of 2021 when I pleaded with him to sell some of his Tesla shares and take some money off the table. Of course, he didn't, and Tesla has since fallen 44%. I don't say this to highlight my market timing ability. I have none. But to emphasize the risk associated with his all-in strategy. But for people like DeBolt, risk is the point. It comes with the territory. That's how you get the opportunity to lose $11 million on a single stock in the first place. You have to take risk. This is why it's such a fallacy to look at some asset and think, if I had only bought back then, because if you had bought back then, you probably would have sold back then too. If you had bought Bitcoin at $1,000, you probably would have sold it at 15 or $30,000 or $52,000 you wouldn't have gotten anywhere near the $68,000 high. Why? Because most people can't stomach that much risk. They aren't that far along the risk-taking spectrum. But those that are, are the ones that can experience such returns. This is how risk works. 
the more risk you take, the more likely you're to see an extreme outcome to the upside or the downside. Jason DeBolt and Atlas Trading are perfect examples of this. DeBolt took lots of risk legally and made tens of millions of dollars. Atlas Trading took even more risk illegally and ended up with 100 million. Unfortunately for Atlas, that 100 million is a lot closer to zero today thanks to the SEC. As some like to say, risk happens fast. But this isn't the only thing that we can learn from this ordeal. There's also a deeper lesson about how people make money in this business. As Jason Zweig's father once told him, quote, there are three ways to get paid. Number one, lie to people who want to be lied to and you'll get rich. Number two, tell the truth to those who want the truth and you'll make a living. Number three, tell the truth to those who want to be lied to and you'll go broke, end quote. While Atlas Trading was happy to sell their lies to their followers to make a temporary fortune, there are far more people in our industry that are just trying to make a living. You'll find them in far greater numbers on FinTwit. You'll find them in wealth management firms across the country. But where you won't find them is in the news. Their stories are never trending on Twitter, yet they make their living just the same. At times, it can look like the entire financial industry is filled with charlatans and frauds. However, we forget that the honest people don't make the headlines. These are the people that understand that managing people's money is a serious affair. They aren't messing around. They aren't playing trading games like so many others are because they understand something that the members of Atlas never could. In the game of trading, the only winning move is not to play. You just listened to the post titled Trading Games by Nick Majuli of ofdollarsanddata.com. Sometimes I wonder, am I really doing all I can to optimize my investments? I've been thinking about this a lot lately with all the excitement around cryptocurrency and content I've read on stock picking. I'm someone who talks about money every day. Shouldn't I try to be a more savvy investor? When I get into these thought loops, I inevitably turn to friends who are much more knowledgeable about investing. And the answer is always the same. The likelihood that you're going to beat the market over the long run is slim to none. So why bother? There are people who enjoy the process of stock picking or analyzing different kinds of investments, but I'm not sure that's really how I wanna spend my time. I also notice that when it comes to investing, I've put a much bigger focus on how much I'm investing rather than the return on those investments. Think of it this way. Let's say there's a super savvy investor who hits big with a 50% return on his $100 investment. He ends the year with $150. What a fantastic return but I'll still make out better with my market matching 10% return if I invest $150. I'll end the year with $165. I'm passive about the actual investing part, but I'm very active in the areas of increasing my income and reducing my expenses. This is the aspect of money management that I have the most control over, so I feel that it's worth the majority of my time. I also think keeping things simple makes my strategy more sustainable as it allows me to be consistent. I focus on fully funding retirement vehicles and keeping a healthy emergency slash opportunity fund. It may not sound as sexy as stock picking, but it's guaranteed to help me reach my long-term financial goals. And that will do it for today. Have a great day and start to your weekend. Thank you for listening. And I'll be back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.